Welcome back. It's The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We, we head straight to our second conversation at this point. We look at the infrastructural deficit. Now, towards ensuring that Nigeria meets the infrastructural need for its population by 2050, the federal government has been urged to put in place necessary legal framework for the adoption of tunneling and underground space technology in the country. Transportation Minister Rutimi Amechi had said, in view of the reality, there will be need to build capacity of Nigerians to embrace the imperatives of developing the underground space, broaden it to combat the challenges that mitigate the impact of congestion in Nigeria's growing city. Studies in Europe have shown huge urban benefits of technology to include uh, the resolution and solution to traffic issues in cities, save time for the rest, fun and study, air quality improvement, decrease in fuel consumption, vehicle operational costs, decrease in daily death rate, tunnel is important for transportation and clean energy, drinking water for irrigation, internet and electricity cables, air conditioning as well as sanitation. Abidemi Agor is a chairman, Tunneling Association of Nigeria, currently advocating the development of tunneling and underground space infrastructure in the energy city of sub-Saharan Africa, especially in Nigeria and maybe Lagos. It's good to have you join us, Abidemi Agor. Thank you very much. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you this morning. Okay. So let's get straight to it. I mean, as fantastic and as brilliant as all of the benefits for having, you know, tunneling in our space and uh, on the ground space technology, do you think that we're ripe for this? Um, I would not just say we're ripe for it. I would say that we are well overdue, you know, for a, a, a city, um, the magnitude of Lagos State, which is um, also classed as one of the biggest cities in Africa. Africa deemed to be the fastest urbanizing continent in, in, in the world. Um, we already have challenges with our urban space in terms of the density and, and the congestion that we have in the city. So underground space use actually offers a different, um, offers an alternative for us to be able to plan and develop our city in such a way that will be more habitable. Mm. But, but, but just like we had that conversation before, we were right here now. If you look at what we have already, we're talking about the road infrastructure. That's right. And uh, we're not faring well. We're not doing well with the road infrastructure. The roads are really nothing to, almost nothing to write them about. Now, if you look at Lagos as a city, biggest city, Africa, business city, whatever it is you target, you want to also look at the fact that, you know, poor road network is also an issue. So do you think that, um, do you think that we can actually you know, say that, hey, we should be delving. It's like we're jumping, you know, from one point, from age one to 10. So um, I would like to look at it from um, a different perspective. So there's a cost for inaction. And the cost for inaction is basically what we're seeing. Um, the reason we have bad roads is because the capacity for those roads are basically being, um, they've been exceeded. So when we have less cargo on the road, when we have less vehicular movement on the road, and a percentage of the population um, transits or mobilizes across the city via a mass transit means, um, then that takes a lot of burden away from the road and saying we have less um, challenges with the quality and, and the roads of the road. Because the, the, the roads are basically designed for a certain capacity, but because of the population and the magnitude of loading on the road and traffic on the road, um, it would basically be susceptible. So for me, I would say um, the, the biggest challenge now is that um, there's a puzzle, there's a, a, an element, um, a piece in the jigsaw that is missing. Um, for us to have a, a, an holistic or a complete infrastructural network, uh, there has to be a, an alternative means of moving 24 million people across the city of Lagos. And even looking at different cities in Nigeria as well, Abuja, Kano, um, as well. So um, having on the ground space use as a means of transporting people you know, within the city um, would actually give us the opportunity to be able to um, plan our cities in, in, a, in, in a more holistic way, looking at ways by which we could um, rethink or reshape the cities so that they can be a lot more habitable, like I said in my introduction. So um, let's, even, let's even say that um, 
let's even say, all right, this is fantastic and um, it should be embraced just like you advocating right. and every other person advocating that there should be a legal framework to this. Um, how will this work? So uh, Nigeria apparently now was a, I, um, is a member nation of um, the International Tunneling and Underground Space Use, for which I'm currently an executive council member as well, representing Africa. Um, we have the benefits of, um, of um, hindsight. So there are a lot of countries, there are 78 other member nations that have developed um, tunneling underground spaces and there's a lot of lesson learned that can be leveraged on. And so we have the opportunity to learn from other countries, developed and even developing countries, um, on um, how we can look at the conceptualization as well as the implementation of tunnel and the ground space. And the biggest mistakes now, when you look at countries like China and India, is that um, you, when you look at the development of your infrastructure, we need to adopt what you call a collaborative approach, where we have multi, um, um, we have, um, it's, it's basically, we have professionals um, collaborating in, um, from the early phase of concept development. So um, for this, you know, for us to be able to achieve this, would, would basically need to um, start leveraging on the information we have um, from um, other countries as to how not to do it, basically. So. Okay, so, but um, the how not to do it, do we also need to factor in, I mean, let, let's come back to some current reality that we have, we have faced in Nigeria, well, in Lagos as it is, we've talked about buildings collapsing, That's right. right? And so several buildings have collapsed because the relevant authorities or stakeholders have not followed the entire procedure. And then certain conditions need to be met. And so you would say you have to meet maybe the geological Absolutely. condition or, you know, the hydrological condition. Uh, do you think that, you know, our climate, the, we, we can meet all of this condition before uh, thinking about all of this? So all these are basically ethical and, you know, um, compliance issues. It's a different, you know, um, it's a different cup of tea and uh, it's all down to leadership. They will say everything rises and falls on leadership. And of course, uh, for the example of building collapsing, I, I know that um, developed countries, especially the United Kingdom, also went through a phase where they had you know, some of these challenges and there was a response. And I believe Lagos State government, you know, when we had the last couple of few um, collapse, responded in a way that um, or well, basically uh, looking to address you know, the regulation, looking at regulation, and that's what we need to do. We need to respond to a lot of these um, incidents um, or events that are catastrophic or that could be detrimental to or fatal you know, for people and um, implement the lessons from this across board. So we're not just looking at buildings, we're looking at um, you know, maybe, you know, things that have to do with NAFDAQ. We're looking at different sectors and ensure that there is compliance. And, and, and like I said, it's all down to leadership. And you rightly said, there are protocols um, that needs to be followed um, in terms of developing underground space use. And if those protocols are not followed, um, there will be consequences, just like any other engineering um, project or any engineering intervention um, where you'd set out guidelines um, and the expectation would be that there will be guidelines, but someone would have to regulate and monitor and manage that. So my expectation is that um, we would have the right people. It's basically having the right people, but the most important thing is having the buying of the um, decision makers and the leadership to drive this. Um, in, in other words, it's not limited to a, a certain climb? Absolutely not, it's not. As long as you have uh, a perfect regulation, absolutely, and, and monitoring, and, and monitoring. That's right. So, and 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 I would say it's just like um, the aviation industry. The aviation industry is perceived to be the safest, and the reason is that it's heavily regulated and also well monitored because of the perceived high risk of fatality. And it's the same way with, with tunneling as well. So you, you wouldn't have a lot of dis um, disasters because it's been regulated internationally and there's a lot of experience around it that we can leverage on as a country. So as, as much as it's okay to be forward thinking and be very progressive in our thoughts, <laughs> 
we can also not take out the fact that there are other issues that we are still grappling with. And major on it, these days, it's almost difficult to take a road trip uh, way the way it used to be. I mean, way back, you can actually take a road trip. It wasn't a perfect system entirely, right. but it feels like we're getting, we're deteriorating as the day goes by. And so the security is a major issue. Have we factored in the issue of security? Yeah. How, how, what's, what's going to be the mode of operation to ensure that you know, those who are going to be plying um, this, uh, tunnels and underground spaces are, are safe? Look at the trains, the, the train tracks, or however you want to call it. Um, we're still also dealing with the fact that it's not safe. Uh, the airways have been threatened a couple of times, even though we would have not had a major incident. And so where does this tunnel leave us in terms of security? Well, so it's, it's all still down to the fact, I know it's, 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 it's a big challenge, you know, when we look, security is a, is a very big challenge. But um, like I, I would always say, it's still down to leadership at the end of the day. Um, if it's worked somewhere else, then it should work if you have the right people in the right places. And... In terms of the planning of um, subterranean infrastructure for transportation or for whatever functionality we want to use it for, um, all these peculiar challenges um, are factored into what you call the design phase. So if you need to have you know, CCTVs, if you need to have kind of real-time monitoring, as a matter of fact, a lot of tunnels in the world is part of the um, international standard requirements would need to have what you call a control room, just like you have a tower in an airport. Um, monitoring visually activities in the you know in the tunnel, so it's it's a standard operation, and I would um, expect that this will be adopted as part of um, the implementation, especially if it has to do with transportation. But like I said, you can use underground space for different things, for utility tunnels, for sewage and water, for for storage. And you can even use it as a basement park, you know. So whatever you want to use it to, you could adopt the level of security um, framework that you want mm. on it and around it. But so, um, can you take us through an update? How far is the Nigerian government, you know, going with this? How far have we embraced this development and initiative? Yeah. So um, obviously the. Um, Initiative started a couple of years ago, about four years ago, and since then we've had interfaces with the Ministry of Transportation, Lands, and Ministry of um, Housing as well, and uh, Ministry of Water Resources, and a few other MDAs. Um, it will interest you to know that I think the, um, the, the, one of the most interesting highlights has been the adoption of tunneling underground space using the Land Transport Act, and um, that was done in um, 2019 when we had um, Senator Gwenga Ashafa and Senator Mama Gege as the chairman and co-chair of the committee at the time. Um, but yeah, that was the phase where that was adopted. But um, I believe now we're now overdue for the next phase, which is implementation. This now has to be implemented into some kind of strategic master plan for how we plan our cities. Is it limited to you know mega cities or it cuts across the 36 states of the federation, it, including well, the FCT? It will cut across the 36 states of the federal um, um, federation. And uh, maybe later on, I would also touch on an initiative that we're working on that is basically addressing how underground space use can be um, integrated you know, for the 36 states um, of the Federation. Many thanks, Abidemi Agor, for being part of the conversation this morning. I absolute appreciate your pleasure. time. Thank you very much. It's an absolute pleasure. Well, we have been talking about an initiative that uh, a lot of experts and a lot of persons think it would be a good development for Africa and Nigeria. Well, that's it this morning on our conversation on The Breakfast. If you missed out on any part of it, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Bokume. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic Friday and happy Children's Day to all of the great, fantastic, amazing children out there.